1236 in the morning, we get that middle of the night phone call. We're calling, there's been a shooting, it's at borderline. Breaking news from Southern California, 12 people have been killed in a mass shooting at a nightclub in Ventura County. I said, how many other students are missing? She said, none, just Elena. Somehow the system failed him. He was an ex-military, but who would ever expect this to happen? One of the strongest things in moving forward is forgiveness. I've always been one who's kind of like, my glass was half full. I don't allow myself to be angry at him. So bridge therapy is, here's a number, call it, and we get them any therapy they need. We bridge that gap. November 8th, 2018, 1236 in the morning, we get that middle of the night phone call. Our daughter, Elena, was a freshman at Pepperdine University, had gone out uh, to college night for line dancing at at uh, Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks, California. We knew where she was. She told us she was going. We encouraged her to go out. Everything went from there. You know, you get that phone call and nobody wants a phone call in the middle of the night. It's never good, yeah. right? Um, and so our friends from uh, Pepperdine, he was a religion professor there and a longtime friend and his wife, um, Chris and Amy called and said, Hannah, Eric, we're calling. There's been a shooting. It's at Borderline. You know, we're praying everything's okay. There was a lot of students there. Elena was there. We turn on the news and you can see the chaos going. Immediately we called my brother who, my brother Adam had been in uh, with Fox News for 12 years and he was stationed in Los Angeles. So I called him and asked him to go see if he can find out what's going on. There was still chaos. At that point, called Adam, called uh, my wife's sister's uh, and family to let everybody know kind of what was going on. Finally, my wife is like, Eric, can we please turn off the, the TV? Like it's just repeating typical 24 yeah. hour news. The hours continued like every, every second turned to minutes. And every time, every, every tick away just was one more, like she was a smart girl. We look back at it, it happened around 11, 22 PM the night before. So now we're at one, one thirty. It's like, she would have found a way to get a hold of us. There was a moment at that point that uh, Pepperdine called to let us know, hey, we're just checking in with you. We're still looking. We're still, you know, finding because there's people at the hospitals. There's a lot of chaos. And the words that came out of my mouth was, I said, how many other Pepperdine students, how many other students are missing? I was hoping to not be alone. Yeah. And she said, none, just Elena. At some point in that window, Hannah my wife said, I've got, she's got her iWatch that we bought her for her 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. And she goes, let me look at find my iPhone. And she clicked up her phone and we saw that it was still in the bar. So it's like, okay, did it drop going out? But then every minute that ticked by was kind of the more the realization. At that point, they were still saying there was people hiding in the building because they were trying to go in. So, but it's getting further and further from further closer to the reality of what we I think we knew from the moment we got the phone call we got down there my brother picked us up drove us back and then we were informed we you know you you kind of everybody files into a room and you sit there and um we kept kind of I just was I just needed him to tell us mm -hmm. you know we knew but I wanted it to be official that they told us uh we were informed uh television cameras in our face as we came out of the building oh. Uh, we took off uh, when uh, my wife wanted to go over to Pepperdine to go to the chapel and the, the university had music playing and somebody with just guitarist and where we could just kind of be. And right away, some of my good friends and fraternity brothers started showing up and like, hey, we're going to take Alex for a walk or, you know, like just to get our son out of the out of the sorrow. Yeah. Um, events of tragedy can pull families apart sure. and or pull them together. Mm -hmm. And this for us, it it pulled us together in, in a big way. Some people, when things like this happen, once they find out, they remember a knowing coming over them at the time, or they feel like they were visited, or after the fact, I had a guest on who definitely still feels his son, and he knows mm -hmm. where he can go, and I, I don't know if communicate is the right word, but do you have any experiences like that you can share where you feel her presence, or maybe you hear from I her? Have, what is it? For me personally, I had, uh, I think the first time I drove up to Elena's gravesite by myself, I just really felt compelled to go there. My radio was on Sirius XM, like the radio station that I had, and it switched to my phone and, and started blasting Amazing Grace. Like literally somebody just took the volume knob and just spun it up high, which was one of the songs that her choir that she was a part of sang at her funeral. I 
switch it. It's on my phone, on my radio, and the song Halo by uh, Beyonce comes on. The lyrics, I was listening to it as I was driving. I'm like, wow, it really does kind of resonate in my scenario of what's in my head right now. And when the song ends, it repeats again. And I'm like, okay, my phone's not on repeat. I haven't done that. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's on repeat and I'm going to be listening to this for, you know, two more times by the time I get to my other business, whatever. But the song ends and Imagine by John Lennon comes on next. And if you, I mean, you've heard the lyrics Mm -hmm. by Imagine, which Mm -hmm. are pretty moving in their own way. Um, And then that ended and then two songs by Brian McKnight, which I used to, I love our old school R&B. And so Elena used to sing them with me. So these two songs come on and I'm like, all right, I get it. Like, I mean, but all of these random things started to happen. And at that point I'm like, all right, I need to do it. So I ended up contacting a medium to, to reluctantly Mm -hmm. to go like, okay, what's going on here? So I was turned on to a medium um, by a friend and the first phone call it ends up all on the phone she introduced herself and then she's like look i'm not a i'm not evidential i'm not gonna say there's a red teddy bear blah blah blah." she said uh elaine is telling me that there's a um that there's an envelope and i said okay she said like a manila envelope she goes do you have like a, a skinny table sure like a tall table like an end table by a couch or something I said, okay. And she says, there's a manila envelope on it. And I said, okay. She says, she keeps telling, I keep asking her what's on the letter, but she's just smiling. She's not answering me. And she's like, do you know anything about that? And I said, no. And so she says, um, let me ask her again. And she's like, okay. She's like, no, she's not. I'm asking her what's on the letter, like what's on the letter in the envelope. And she just has this sarcastic smirk, which sounds like Elena. Right? Mm-hmm. She gets it from her father and <laughs> no joke. I get home that day and on, we have a, a hall kind of tall table yeah. right b- below a family portrait. And in the envelope, there was a manila envelope on the wall, like or leaning up that somebody had put in there. We don't, one of the people that lives with us, uh, cause we have a couple people that live there, um, put it on the table. And when, when I opened it up, it had five bracelets from Sergeant Ron Gila. So the officer that entered the building that lost his life with the 11 other victims, I reached out and I said, can I get some to our detective? And I said, can I get some bracelets for some of the officers in Napa that have done things for us as a thank you for a, from a fallen brother? And just as a little gift to them as mm-hmm. their token appreciation. So the envelope has five bracelets, no letter, no here's the bracelets. Have a good day. hope you guys are doing okay. Nothing, just five bracelets. So the medium kept saying, what's, what's on the letter. Mm. And there was no letter, right? The other, the other incident was a uh, different time. She, this was like eight months later. She said, um, she still likes to joke around about her boyfriend, about the red metal garden flowers, like their inside joke. I end up calling uh, the boyfriend after. And I said, all right, this is a little weird, but I just spoke to a woman and she said this. And I said, it doesn't make any sense to me, but can, does this make any sense? And then I said, did you have an inside joke about red metal garden flowers? And he, his response was what the beep. Yeah. Right. And I, and I go, yeah. And he, and I go, yeah, do you understand? He goes, yeah, I understand. And I go, what is it? He goes, my mom's a good gardener. And we came back after school one day and we were going to grab like a lemonade or something to sit in the backyard. And when we did, uh, we see these red metal garden flowers, like spinny flowers that she yeah. had, garden stakes. And I was like, mom, w- why do you have metal flowers? Like you're a good gardener. And she said, they make me feel sophisticated. Huh. And so Elena would say, hey, let's go be sophisticated and sit in your backyard and, and talk and hang out. Wow. And so that was their There's inside There's no joke. way she could have known that or that you could have known no, that. No, no way. I, I didn't even know it, right? And yeah. so I had to call him for him to go like, are you serious? And those mm-hmm. are those moments that are just so mind blowing to me that it's like, you can't make that stuff up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So it just keeps you open minded. There's a lot. It just really does. Right. I mean, our world is so, how do we change and create that? And so I've always had this kind of uh, positive mindset and tried to be friendly with people. Um, And so this has just kind of driven me further that way. I think one of the strongest things in moving forward is forgiveness to allow that And I am not, uh, I don't allow myself to be angry at him. Um, We don't really even know his name, to be honest, like, Mm -hmm. because somehow the system failed him. He was an ex-military 
uh, a lot of signs that he was violent and things would happen, but who would ever expect this to happen? Sure. And that's, that's with our foundation. It was like, be the positive change mm. and coming off of Gandhi's be the change in the world you want to see our foundation specifically on the mental health piece started doing something just came out of r randomly is, um, uh, we call it bridge therapy. So I saw a post on Facebook sounded very suicidal of somebody that I knew he was ex military. I reached out to a friend who was a therapist and said, can you meet with this guy? And he said, yes, give him my number. So put him in touch with them and come to find out he was suicidal and possibly going to hurt others and wow. X, Y, Z. And when they get out of the military, they say what they got to say to get out. Right. And then once they're out and they get that stamp from the VA that they're clear, it's hard to get them back in to get the sure. mental health services they need. So bridge therapy is, um, I mean, we had a 17 year old teen third attempted suicide and, and the local medical provider that she had said, okay, we'll give you your therapy. You can go in 30 days, your third attempted suicide in 30 days. You know, like when they come off the 5150. Wow. So what we do is we basically say, here's a number, call it, and we get them any therapy they need to get them till the next, like we bridge that gap. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please leave a comment and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel so we can continue to get great guests. In the meantime, check out these two videos right here. Thank you. Thank you.